Hello, everyone. Welcome to Financeology 101. Class is now in session. The information provided during this podcast is just that, information. You will need to do further research to address your specific situation. Enjoy the session. Hello, everyone. I'm Robin, and my husband is Elroy, and welcome to Gifted Generation Presents Financeology 101. Hello, the, ti- the title of this session is, Are You a Cheerful Giver? Are You Sowing the Seeds, Tithes, and Offerings? And once again, I'd like to welcome our wonderful speaker for this session, Tina Smith, and Tina is the president of the Financial T organization. She's a financial coach, and she's an author. Welcome, Tina. Thank you so much, Robin and Erwin, again for having me. I appreciate the opportunity to, um, you know, speak with listeners, kind of share my heart and um, my um, knowledge, uh, you know, about finances, and uh, for always um, allowing me to come back and and have this platform. So it means so much to me. So thank you for having me yet again on your podcast. Thank you. Oh, you're welcome. So tell the listeners about yourself or those people that probably listen for the first time. Okay, well, excellent. Um, so hello, everyone. I'm Tina Smith. Again, you've already heard that I'm the president of the Financial T Coaching and Consulting Firm. Um, you can always go to my website. That is www.thefinancial, the letter T, dot org, the financial T.org, um, where you'll find our mission. Our mission really is to educate individuals on their finances so they could um, be financially free. Um, it's important to us to make sure that as we um, educate folks, um, they're able to go along and make then subsequent decisions on how to. Um, better their finances. We do um, not only coaching with um, families and individuals, we also do consulting with businesses, teaching employees how to optimize their dollars within their employer-sponsored contribution plan. Um, So that is um, the business for the most part. Um, A wife of now newly retired uh, Marine, so I'm so excited today. It's his first day as a retiree, Um, so I'm really excited for him. We have a 15-year-old um, son, uh, whose name is Anthony. Um, so I got wife and mom out the way. Uh, I do serve as a deaconess at my church. Uh, and so, um, it was important for me to not only take my education in my profession, but also take my education in the word and marry these two together. That's how I came up with it's your turn. Walk in your financial purpose. Again, you can go right on my website and order your copies today. Um, I guess that's enough about me, uh, because I think this topic is really worth digging into, like, right away. So I'm really excited about tonight. So again, thank you for having me, and thank you for the opportunity for uh, sharing, um, allowing me to share what I do. Well, thank you for joining us again. And I thought this topic was important because normally when you speak to financial advisors or people in that industry, tithes and offerings is not a part of that agenda. And so into, into the kingdom is very, very important. And I wanted you to just, from your um, background in finances, as well as part of a ministry, tell us about the importance of tithes and offerings. Uh, absolutely. Uh, agree, though, that um, in my industry, it might not be um, a topic of choice, per se. Um, what I have found is that as I'm talking with clients um, who may have had financial professionals in their lives previous to meeting with me, um, they've found that tithes and offerings are greatly misunderstood and uh, should be um, an item, if you will, to be discussed and negotiated. And the true believer does not agree with that thought process. I've also found with some other clients that the reason why they choose the financial tea coaching consulting firm 
is because we totally understand the importance of giving. So as I'm talking with individuals, and if they decide to send me their budget or during the discussion, they let me know up front, you know, we're, we tie to our church or we, you know, give to a particular organization, um, you know, within, you know, whether it be the combined federal campaign or just an organization that they feel that touched their heart enough to donate. Um, I recognize immediately that, you know, this is, these are dollars that are going to be taken out of the budget, period, dot. And I respect that. What I want to do is make sure that we find room elsewhere to make sure that that goal of giving tithe and offering and other charitable donations are found so that the budget can still stay intact. You can still be a giver. You can still live. Um, but I understand the importance. I'm a giver myself. Um, anyone who knows me knows that. All my clients understand that when I do a budget, um, it's income. The very next thing under income is tithing. The very next thing under tithing is me. Uh, so what I find is that it's important to, as you budget, list your priorities. And the priority is to give the Lord, and in my family, in my household, is giving the Lord 10%. And that's what we're going to do. So this is not, you know, hey, well, you know, maybe we do 2% this time. And then, no, it is, let's do with this 10%. We're going to pay us another 10%. And then we're going to be disciplined in finding out how we can live off the other 80. So in my book, I discuss um, not only game planning, but also using your gift. And then the last section is giving. Now, of course, you know, individuals may wonder why give is last. In my book, technically it's first, but I recognize that when you understand how to game plan, how to use your gift and earn my money, when you start giving, you're going to just see a whole new world of opportunities, you know, for you and for your money and, and how it could be a resource and not the source. Um, but I think that it's so, so important for us to be educated enough on how to optimize our finances and also give. What I find is that people believe that tithing is quote unquote expensive. It's not if you know how to optimize um, your earnings and reducing your spending. And so it's a sacrifice. And I just happen to know in my personal life that when I give to my local church or to other organizations, primarily my local church, I don't want to make it seem as though my local church is not first, it is. Uh, but when I give, I find that dollars are returned to me so quickly. I find that everything else in my life gets better as I set my priorities. That's what it's really about. It's about, you know, where's your heart and where's your priority? And once you align your priority, it's showing by your giving. And when you do, your, your heart is different and you'll, you'll be willing to um, accept and see all the other blessings that just come from it. I can never explain some of the checks that I've gotten in the mail. I can never explain, explain relationships that have been renewed and restored. I can't explain it and I never will try, but I can always give my testimony. And giving is so important in my life but then I also recognize a, as a financial professional, it's also important in others' lives. And it behooves me to make sure that I recognize that, respect that, and then help them make sure that they achieve and continue that goal of tithing. Um, that is so true because if you think about it, the government makes sure <laughs> they <Yeah>. get theirs, <laughs> you know? Just like, they you know, the Bible talks about paying Caesar. Yeah, pay Caesar. That's right. Out. Yeah. <laughs> they get theirs off the top. You don't even yes. get your check before they get theirs. So to give back to the kingdom to God should be the same way, right off the top, immediately. Because immediately. That's, right. Because in the Bible, that he, that's what we're required to do. We were told to do that. And like you said, when you're obedient, 
the bl the blessings, and it don't have to always be financial blessings. That's correct. Away. Yep. It yep. could be us your health, yep. um, covering protection over your family. Mm -hmm. All sorts of blessings can come your way by being obedient to God's word. So it is so so important to not put him last. Like I'm gonna get this done and that done, and then what I got left, he gets. No. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You give it to him first, show your obedience, and Absolutely. then you'll see how he will turn around and bless your family. It's just the truth. And what I think is that, well, for one, I need to say this uh, before I forget. The reason why this book came to be was because believers stopped believing in God's word, especially when it comes to money. And what I wanted to do was and what was impressed upon me in my heart is I wanted to put something together that was very easy to read but and very digestible so that people can take these nuggets and start taking action and I believe that if if a if a, if someone read this book and said okay I'm I'm just going to give it a try I, look I've been there okay I've been there to where I'm looking at you know uh, in my case uh, my bishop, which is Bishop Derek Greer and Pastor Your Me Too Greer at Grace Church in Dumfries, Virginia. Woo woo. But, you know, when I first started going, I'm looking like, OK, for real. OK. You know, and I and I what I started to do and I, I must be saying this because it's going to help somebody because I, I had no intent on saying any of this. <laughs> but um, so, but like I said, I've been there. So, you know, I'm looking, you know, like, OK, with this here, here we go again. It's kind of what my thought was. You know, and what I started to do, I started testing the word that was coming from my bishop's mouth. And it wasn't about money. Things that he was teaching about had nothing to do with finances at all at the time. But he would say something and I'm like, OK, that right there, you know, based on what, you know, you just taught out of the word, because the way that my bishop teaches, he teaches word for word, line by line. And so, you know, I'm reading along based on what he's teaching. And I was OK. I could do that. Okay, I'm going to try that this week. And lo and behold, you know, uh, whatever it is that he had just taught on was going to be, you know, a part of my week. And it was going, I was going to have to exercise what I just learned. And as I started testing God's word based on what he, but based on what I was getting taught at our church, when I started mm -hmm. testing God's word, I started finding that it was true. I'm like, okay, that worked. And every week, that worked. That worked. That worked too. Okay. Okay. I see it. I see what's going on. So then when, you know, there was, you know, start, start teaching about money, I was like, okay, I'm going to try that too. And this is the only area that I recognize in the Bible where the Lord says to um, kind of try me on this one. Mm -hmm, like, mm -hmm. you know, test me here. Yeah. And I'm telling you, when that word gets in your heart and you say, okay, Lord, I'm willing to test you. I heard what you said for me to give to this church. I'm not feeling it. I'm not feeling it. I'm telling you, I've been there before. I've not been feeling that. And I heard direct from the Lord. I know it was from him. And I'm not feeling it. Or I'm looking at, you know, what my bank account says today. And I'm not feeling it. Once you turn your heart to feel it and be obedient, I promise you, I, don't, I can't explain it. But there's been times where we dedicated, you know, an amount of money to give and somehow God made a way to fulfill the word that he had shared with me or my husband or, right. you know, whatever. And I just I've been my mouth has dropped in awe plenty of times over the years, you know, when I gave. So it's unexplainable. But I'm telling you, if you prioritize your budget and prioritize the Lord in your life, uh, period, and let that show in your giving. I'm just telling you from my experience, it has been amazing. It's just an amazing journey. The, you know, the amount of dollars that we now are able to give doesn't compare to where we started. And I need listeners to understand that is this whole process started when we had little, when my husband and I had little, we started. And the Bible talks about don't despite small beginnings. And I use that um, verse in my book. Don't despite small beginnings. 
because as you are obedient with little, and the Bible talks about this too, it will become much. So as you are, you know, in your giving season at little, the Lord is going to open doors for you to be able to trust you with much. But think about it. If you were acting like you had some sense when you had little and did what you needed to do and was supposed to do according to what the word of God says, when he gives you much and it's going to come when he gives you much, you already know what to do. There's no question. Right. But we were in training and we cannot expect the Lord to give us much if we're holding on to what he told us to give. My husband likes to say, you can't receive a blessing with a closed fist. And I think that's true. So you're sitting there with your closed fist. Let's say it's a a dime. You're sitting there with a dime and you're like, absolutely not. I'm not giving it. Uh Uh-uh, I'm not giving it. But if you open your hand and give that dime, we don't know if the Lord was trying to give us a quarter more than, you know, more than double our money. We just have to think of it in that way. We have to be obedient. And as we're obedient, he's going to, he's going, I'm telling you, when I tell you the word of God and, he, and what he says does not fall to the ground, it won't. That's but we have, to, we have to believe again. And I think that's where um, we've fallen short. And that's why, that's why this book came along. And, you know, I hear a lot of people well, I used to hear a lot of people say, oh, you give into the church. That's just to make the pastor rich. And that makes you so he can get a nice car. And and and, and they make it so materialistic. And they're not realizing uh, McDonald's do the same thing. They, they, they advertise <laughs> to get your money. Burger King, Target, Walmart. Yeah. They all advertising to get your money. And you have no problem walking over there and giving them your money. But when the church say uh, we want to build something or we want to do something, sow a seed into that project, you got a problem with it. And my, my, my feeling is if God says in my heart for me to give, I'm going to give. And what the pastor does or do not do with the money, that's on him. I did my part. Right. So and there's, there's a obedient. level of accountability. Right. There's a level of right. accountability at every point. Right. So I'm, I'm accountable for what I do and don't do, and what I give and don't give. And right. then whoever is on the receiving end is also accountable. But that person is on the receiving end who has more responsibility. Right. There's also right. heavier consequences. And, uh, you know, that needs to, you know, I, but I think what we do, we focus on um, the negative that. Mm-hmm. You know, that church has done in the past. I'm not saying that it's not still going on, but in, in some areas, but uh, we focus on the negative when we need to take our eye off of, you know, maybe who's in front of us per se and look at who is his, is telling us directly. And I'm talking about from a vertical way. If I'm right. hearing from the Lord to give now, I've been in places I've been in, you know, all kinds of places and the Lord has been hushed on me giving. <laughs> That's fine. And I'm like, all right, well, I'm just going to sit here and, you know, whatever, you know, but then there's other times where, you know, the Lord will tell me. And, but I, but I know I recognize that I have to have a relationship. And I, the funny thing is I heard from a mentor of ours at our church. Um, Cause my husband and I was having a conversation and he brought our mentor into the conversation and he goes, the devil wouldn't tell you to give the church money. So we're like, well, duh, you know, <laughs> we were thinking that, you know, this came with the Lord, you know, he's like, really? <laughs> well, okay. Touche, touche. We know we, we got it. Yeah. Let me ask a question though, because I understand about giving and tithes and, and you have even some people who are believers in the church, go to church routinely, but they still, when they sit down and they look at their budget, Mm-hmm. That's the last thing on the sheet of paper. Is, exactly. You know, paying ties. So mm-hmm. how, I mean, what is the, what was, well, maybe your switch. What do you say to people who, who are in the church, who are believers um, and still struggle because they see, you know, uh, light bill, car bill, insurance. Mm-hmm. These are mm-hmm. things I can touch and ascertain to because I, it's in my constant life that I can feel and share sure. the results from it. But then you says, I'm giving to 10% to a church. 
where you know, and I don't really see any physical right, where's the benefit? It's a spiritual mm-hmm. thing mm-hmm. connection. Mm-hmm. But you know, like I said, the spiritual connection is there, but there's still a disbelief that, hmm, mm-hmm. you know, you no, know, five to get to ten, ten to get to twenty type thing. <laughs> That's not that, right. that that that's gonna turn over for me because I haven't seen it in the past. I've given it in the past and it hasn't happened mm-hmm. in the past. Mm-hmm. So uh, is it more the heart, if anything, that you can do, or is it more of belief, or is it a combination of both? I think it's a combination of both, and I will also add education. Um, I don't want to make it sound as if you know, um, um, not. I'm, I don't want to say it, education in the terms of, you know, someone may be, you know, stupid or anything like that. What I'm saying is getting into God's word and see what he says about it. So we need to educate ourselves on God's word um, and what he says. What I've, what I've noticed is that individuals who have problems uh, with tithing, tithing and, and please know, um, I teach at my church um, these same principles. And, um, you know, I've been in, you know, some of the classes and some, some of the folks look at me like, okay, you're yeah, right. You know? And so I, so I get those looks. And so I appreciate your question um, concerning this and what I've said in the past and I will continue to say, and I'll say tonight, um, it is a heart issue. It is when you gave, were you cheerful about it? Or was it like, I'm paying a bill who enjoys sending money from your bank or writing a check to pay a bill? I don't enjoy this. This is not one of my, you know, to-do lists of, of pure joy to pay, you know, my electric company or my phone company or whatever. Right. I, right. But so I think what people do is they see it more as a bill mm-hmm. versus mm-hmm. an opportunity. Mm-hmm. Right. And mm-hmm. so for me, I would say to that person, look at it as an opportunity. How was your heart when you gave? Was you like, huh? Or was you, or was your heart? I'm so excited for another opportunity to give to build God's kingdom. Uh, but right. we have to know what the word of the Lord says. And I'd like to share um, this little um, scripture that I wrote about in my book. I think what happens is we get the first part. We get Malachi three. You know the part that talks about you know give the tithe. But I think we have failed to look a little further and understand the why behind what the Lord said. And so just a couple of verses after you hear or you read give tithe, which was in Malachi 3, 8 through 10, talking about what a man God robbed and Lord, how you say we robbed you. Just keep Mm -hmm. going. Here's Mm -hmm. the why behind it. And I will rebuke the devourer for your sakes so that Mm -hmm. he will not destroy the fruit of your ground. Mm -hmm. So that tells me that if I give, if I'm doing what the Lord says, he's going to stop bad things from happening to the fruit. So so the the seeds that I'm planting will be protected. Uh, Like, like a gardener would, would turn the soil and water it. You know what I'm saying? There's a harvest in that seed. And if we hold the seed, that seed will never become the harvest that it was supposed to be. I can mm-hmm. hold an apple seed in my hand all day. It will never become an apple or mm-hmm. apple tree, ever. Right. right. I have to give it. I have to put it in good ground. Right. So anyway, uh, to continue on with the scripture, nor shall the vine fail to bear fruit for you in the field. So that's just like the vine dresser. So if you are familiar with grapes and how they're grown, the vine dresser has to cut and prune and whatnot to make sure that those grapes um, are harvested properly. Also, there has to be a level of protection from weather, from pests, from everything to make sure that those grapes harvest properly. So that leads me to believe that um, if I plant this seed, that if I put it in good ground, it's going to be you know, nourished properly. If I put it in good ground, the vines that, you know, I have the extended branches will also be blessed as well. Uh, next, it says, says the Lord of hosts, and all nations will call you blessed for you will be a delightful land, says the Lord of hosts. So I believe that if we just, and, and I'm guilty of this too, you know, before I, you know, really got into God's word about what it said about, you know, money. And I would go to churches and would hear just Malachi 3, 8. 
And mm-hmm. that's where the that's where the preaching stopped. But I got into a local church that taught me something a little bit more than that. Got a little bit deeper instead of just hollering at me about tithe and what I should be doing with my money. I I learned why, why it was important. And I felt that just a couple of scriptures away, because I remember being a younger person and, you know, I was kind of double dutching if I wanted to, you know, be living for the Lord or not, I was double dutching it. (laughs) And um, I found that I would read as far as the preacher went and I didn't read anymore. I closed the book and listened to him or her preach about this particular topic. But I never read a little bit further or understood the, in the entire context. So that's why I was talking about education and get into the word for yourself and finding out exactly what it is because it's not a mystery. He right. says to do it, but the mystery, I mean, quote unquote, the mystery was just a couple of verses underneath it. So it's not like, you know, this was some hidden area that we had to find out. We just had to read just a couple of, you know, sentences below to find out the why behind it. And so um, it is a heart issue. It is, you know, a priority issue. Um, but it is also education. We got to get into God's word to see what he really says about it, because he doesn't he doesn't leave a whole bunch of, you know, um, to the imagination. It, the, the word of God is pretty clear. Uh, you know, how we should manage our money appropriately. And like you said earlier, try it. Try him. Test him, I'm telling you. Yes. Yeah. Just try it and see what how you'll be blessed for. Just trying him. And our pastor was just teaching um, the other day about God's word is true. And let every other every man be a liar. His word is true. So he's saying, try me and watch what I'll do. So that, I mean, it is like you said, we have to read for ourselves. We have to dig a little deeper than what you're hearing on TV or in church. Just dig a little deeper and you'll find the answer. And like, she, and like Tina said, it's not a mystery. He's not hiding anything from us. Mm-hmm. It's just up to us to seek it out. Yes, exactly. Exactly. And I was just amazed as I'm reading. I'm like, huh, if I just read a couple of verses later, I would have found out, you know, and, and my mind shifted to be less critical because I was very critical about it because I've been in churches to where I've given and then the pastor comes up with a new Cadillac and then his wife from a new Cadillac and then now mm-hmm. somebody got a Harley in their family and somebody got a new house. Been there, done that, okay? <laughs> but, mm-hmm. <laughs> um, but at the same time, you know, I recognize that that is that person's heart, that person's problem and they're going to be held accountable, um, you know, for, for those actions. Uh, but at the same time, uh, if... So, so I'm being critical. And so when I read this, um, I was a lot less critical and said, okay, then th- now the onus is on me. Now I understand the why behind it. Now it's up to me. What am I going to do about it? Am I going to stay critical and be mad that it's 10%? You know, or do I argue if it's on gross or net? You know, what, what do we do here? And so now the onus is on me. And, you know, there is a question that I get a lot. Um, you know, do I gross on net? Do I gross on, I mean, sorry, do I tithe on net? Do I tithe on gross? I'll tell you straight up, I tithe on gross because when I want, if, if I tithe and I'm expecting a harvest from that, I don't want a net harvest. I'm going to tell you what I know. I don't I want, uh, I don't want one that <laughs> only caught some. I don't want the after taxes. I don't want after FICA. I don't want, after, look, I don't want after my medical. Look, I want the growth <laughs> blessing. So if I'm gonna give, I'm gonna give a gross seed to get a gross blessing. Because I know if I give a net seed, I'm gonna get a net blessing. That's all I'm gonna say about that. Amen. <laughs> you said a word right there. Girl. <laughs> Listen, well, I'm gonna, I want I'm the, gonna... I want the whole kit and caboodle. You understand? <laughs> yeah, yeah. The kit and well, the caboodle. Well, I, well, I'm gonna speak to something you know that you know from personal experience, and I'm not gonna speak for every man out there. I'm just speaking, you know, just for generality. I know, what, like the boss man, where our biggest struggle is, is actually, you know, even though I was raised in the church and all of this stuff, got away from it, came back, 
you know, head over here, all kinds of stuff. I know one of my biggest struggles was was just that the bottom line. I'm I'm writing down the budget and seeing everything, and I'm like, okay, somebody got to be cut short. Well, mm-hmm. uh, this this week we don't get ten percent, Lord. You may get ten dollars. You know, mm-hmm, then we say, mm-hmm. Lord, you broke my heart. I'm just saying mm-hmm. for men, our thing is for for what I uh, people I've talked to you know, in general, we're looking at taking care of the home, taking care of things that break down, making sure bills are paid. You know, either on time or just pay, period. So mm-hmm. we struggle with that part of the spirituality. Even though, like I said, we were raised in church and we believe in God. When it comes to a lot of guys that I'm not gonna say I hang around all that type. I have a mixture of friends that that do it religiously on time, all the time. It goes over and above, and I have some that don't. So mm-hmm. I'm mm-hmm. always curious to one that don't. And the biggest thing is like my they tell me, and this is my struggle. My job is to make sure I take you home. I make sure the bills are paid. Mm-hmm. Bills, you know. When my wife, she's like, I'm going to give it to the good Lord first. I'm going to make sure that mm-hmm. thing is taken care of first because then the home is going to be taken care of. But it's right. still so broken because if the wife is paying the tithes and the husband is the head of his wife, things are so out of order, the blessing is not mm-hmm. going to come. And if I am giving, I'm not giving cheerfully. I'm giving begrudgingly. I'm like, you know, okay, mm-hmm. you just going to pay the man. You know, you know, type thing. Mm-hmm. And then, this is another yeah, bill. Yeah. 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 So it's like, <laughs> you know, it, it took me a while to get my heart in line with giving cheerfully versus just giving because, uh, you know, I give 9.9%, you know, <laughs> that type of thing. Right. You know, like you said, gross and net. So I'm just saying, I know what men, we do struggle with that um, because we always say, you know, we'll let the lead, ladies leave the church, you know, leave the church. You know, when our church, it's, it's very male dominant that does all mm-hmm. the, the head of everything, a lot of, the, a lot of the ministries and stuff. So I'm just speaking to that portion of it. I know there's a struggle and I know sometimes it's hard to, you know, to see the the difference between you know giving tithes, not paying tithes, giving tithes, right, giving right, offering, you know, mm-hmm. giving offerings, and then making sure, okay, I still have left for everything else, you know. And right. I always say, you know, that's that's a piece I just want to make make plain. That was my struggle. It's, it's not a struggle anymore, but I'm saying right. I was there. So, uh, it's oh, just, absolutely, I, I, I had to overcome that, and and it took me a while. And I just thank God my wife was patient enough to let me overcome that. Sure, absolutely. And that's why I think, and, and trust me, men aren't the only ones that have that struggle. Um, because, you know, I deal with and have dealt with a lot of single women who also have the same struggle. And so, you know, if you're a single woman, you have the same responsibility as a single guy or, you know, to where you have to make sure that the, the household is still taken care of. You find young people, men and women, um, you know, they're buying their first homes in their 20s, you know. Um, so these folks have some real. Um, issues as far as, you know, making sure that they have dollars available. Um, so even in that, I always talk about, you know, of course, you want to give your 10%. Some people have made um, mistakes in which 10% may not, quote unquote, be affordable today because of the monetary m- mistakes that have been made. And when I talk about monetary mistakes, I'm talking about things like payday loans, uh, things like high credit card bills, maybe high interest vehicle loans that take a lot of the money, but that's where somebody like me comes in and helps fix those problems so that we can free up some money so that we can really be and have the abundant life that God talks about. God doesn't talk about an abundant life as if it's not attainable for us. It is, but we have to make sure that we manage our money properly. And if we follow God's word about how to manage it properly, then we're okay. But a lot of times we get into these problems because we haven't read God's word and learned to manage it properly. So now we're kind of backing up like, oh, snap, you know, uh, if I have a thousand dollars and nine hundred ninety nine dollars is going to bills, we need to just figure out how do we lessen that outgoing dollars. And I feel like I've, I've said this before, you know, on the podcast, I mean, but it, it's still the same. So excuse me for sounding like a broken record. But it's a matter of making sure that we decrease our outgoing dollars right. and then right. allowing our income you know, to be optimized. And so that's what it boils down to. And so what I tell folks who may not be there today, be, start where you are, start where you are. I don't care if it's not 10%. Do I want it to be 10%? Is that your goal to be 10%? Is that what God's words? Absolutely. Let's start where we're at. 
and then allow, you know, that faith to be built up in you and allow an opportunity to figure out how can we get these, um, these, these outgoing dollars low enough so that we can tie. And there's just a whole new world of, of opportunity and blessings that come our way. We have to start somewhere. And it's like you said, it's all about trusting God, trusting, because I was listening to Elroy and it was all he was thinking it's all me instead of trusting God to meet our needs. So it, you have to have that relationship with God and trust him to take care of you. Yeah, and he's trustworthy. And yeah. I've taught, I've taught, you know, about finances, you know, at my church. And I, I said this, um, we have to remember that God is not people. Um, right. You know, we've, we've, um, you know, had people promise, you know, stuff like if we lend money, someone's going to pay us back. We, you know, we heard these promises and these promises were broken. That's not God. He doesn't treat us that way. If he makes a promise or if he says something, consider it done. You know, you might not see it, you know, um, right now, but consider it that his word will not fall to the ground. And so I just have to you know, remind people that, you know, God does not equal, you know, or, or is people, you know, people are going to lie. People are going to cheat. People are going to do all that. That's not God. So we have to section. We have to sanctify him and sanctify him in our own mind that right. he is not the same as those folks over there that lied about us, that, you know, that whatever. He is right. something else. And so we can't equate him to people. So he so, is trustworthy. So it, my pastor always says, and I'll give a shout out to um, the doctor and Lady Chapman of Raleigh North Christensen and Raleigh North Carolina. Woo -woo. Okay. <laughs> he always tells us is that the 10% is what we're required to do. So mm -hmm. that will rebuke the devourer. However, That's right. to get the increase, the extra blessing on top of that is where the offering come in because that's sacrificial. You're giving that's right. your tithe and your offering. So can mm -hmm. you speak on the offering, that piece right there? Oh, absolutely. Um, what I found when I do offering, it's more so for a specific um, venture maybe that our church is doing. Right now, we're in the middle of building, you know, I believe a $6 million project. I believe it's six. I, I may not be telling the truth there. But anyway, uh, anyway, it's, it, it, no, that was our last building. Our new building will be in more in the 20s. Um, so, but okay. anyway, um, so for us, um, it was a matter of making sure that we did our part. And if we all pull together and do everybody's equal part, I'm not saying because I gave a dollar, you gave a dollar. But what I'm saying is, because I gave a dollar, I hope that the folks around me that's part of this community will also give what they can. What I can do is a dollar. You know what I mean? So right. um, being able to you know join in as a community um, to see a particular you know thing happen. I mean, my goodness, for us, I know and I remember when we walked into our church doors that you know my husband and I relationship was pretty bad. And, and we weren't really sure if we wanted to continue together. Um, so I know that sitting in those chairs, learning, people loving on us, because um, we were kind of here alone, you know, um, mm -hmm. but people loving on us, people having investment into us, and they didn't know us, but invested in us anyway, invested their personal time, you know, with us. So had it not been for, you know, their encouragement and their leadership and their mentoring, um, you know, my husband and I would probably be another statistic. So knowing that, I we, we feel like there's no other option for us to give so that somebody else coming behind us that's going to sit in them same seats, right. get what we got. Uh, right. so, so for us, it's, it's, it's bigger than, you know, um, it's, it's bigger than just receiving something. It is, we know what this church did for us. And because we want other families to remain together, we want other marriages to continue to work. You know, we want other children to grow up in two parent households and, you know, stop this other madness um, that's going on. Um, 
that's 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 where we're at. So we want you know other folks to experience the blessings that we experience. And so right. that's the motivation really for us. And so anything that we awesome. can do to put our hands to the plow to make sure that this building get built, that's where we're at. Um, so yeah. Yeah. Um, so so that's just that's, that's just you know my testimony. I really can't um, speak on you know giving sacrificially outside of that because that's the only place I've ever given. I've ever given sacrificially. Because if you think about it, there were people before us that sowed the seed. Oh yeah. So that we can be a blessed, uh, be blessed. So now it's our turn to do the same, sow a seed, so we can be bl- a blessing to other people. Absolutely. So other families can be blessed, and and that's what it is about God's kingdom is. You you sowing into his kingdom, so the blessings and his word will continue on and on and on. It's not yes. about us. It's more so. And so if you're looking for, to give tithes and offerings to get stuff, that's not what this is about. It's not it about wrong. stuff. It's yeah. about making sure his his word continues to move forward and other families being blessed down for generations. So period. Yeah. Think about it in those terms because mm-hmm. some are somebody already did it for you. So now it's your turn to do it for future generations or for other families. Right. And what I also think about too, my husband and I talked about this some years ago when we started really giving sacrificially. We see our son and grandkids attending the same church that we go to. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, we see some of the youth that we would mentor leading the church when we're older and we have grandchildren we see this coming so with that being said why wouldn't we want to make sure that our grandkids get this type of teaching you know to continue to pass on through the generations it would it would be not only stupid in my opinion but also catastrophic to our lineage right if we failed to do something about it. And right. um, it, it, I, I, you, you talk about future generations, that's exactly where we're at about that. To us, yeah. you know, our, our son's kids will go here and learn and, you know, experience the abundant life that, you know, we ended with, if that makes sense. So, mm-hmm. yeah, it's, that's, you, you got to do it. I mean, yeah. <laughs> <that's>, yeah. <laughs> It's a generational thing. It's it's just it's just not about us because God is a generational God. So he and we're created in his image. So we need to be thinking on those terms as well as bless the generations to come and keep it moving, keep it moving. So don't think about um, if I give God like he's a genie, I give him he will give me this. I give him. No, that's not what it's about. You you doing it. Because you're so blessed and we're blessed. We have, and I'm not talking about me and Elwood. I'm talking about us as a nation. We We are blessed people and we have so much stuff. It's not about the stuff. It's about making sure spiritually our grant, like you said, your kids and your grandkids, uh, uh, the word just continues on and on and on and that we grow from that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And. no, please go, go ahead, ahead, Robin. Oh, and so don't don't think about amassing stuff because it's just stuff. It's, yeah. it's more important than that. It absolutely 100% is. And uh, it reminds me of the scripture in Matthew uh, chapter 6, I believe. And he starts talking about don't your, your, your treasure is, you know, where your heart is. Don't start putting your treasure into stuff that, you know, people can steal moths can eat up don't do that Mm -hmm, put your mm -hmm. put your treasure where it really matters and that is in God's kingdom it matters there yeah here it is Matthew 6 19 through 21 where it talks about don't lay up um, you know for yourselves treasure on earth where moths can rust I'm sorry moth and rust destroy and where thieves break in and steal but lay for yourself treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust destroys and where thieves do not break in a steal for where your treasure is, your heart will be there also. I also talk about the scripture in my book. And the funny thing is the scriptures that I'm reading, I, I write out of my book. I mean, I, which obviously comes from the word of God, but, um, and, and my, um, uh, my choice of, um, uh, 
scripture. It's ESV. I just happen to write a lot of ESV. <laughs> That's where mine is. I'm not really sure why ESV is my thing, but it is my jam. It really is. I love the ESV version. So as you're reading my book, you're like, oh, there's a lot of ESV in here. Yeah, yeah I, it is. I did see that. I saw it. <laughs> it's all good. It's all good. Every now and again, there's Amplified. There's a message. Yeah, good, there's even ESV. But child, it is ESV. Okay. Talking to me, buddy. Yeah, it's okay. Get the word out. Just gotta get the yes, word out. Yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> Elwood, you have any questions or any more statements you want to? Uh, no, she answered all my questions. And, you I'm know, glad. Uh, she's always done excellent at speaking on any topic that we give her. So, <laughs> as always, she's And my, my prayer is that people definitely hear this and be blessed by it. And right. they grow from this because this is so important. I know with financial advice that you want to make sure you save and invest in 401k and all of that that's all good but this is the key this is the key your tithes and your offerings well what i say is that when you give it opens the door mm -hmm. for you to you know do those other things but mm -hmm. also from a financial expert um what, what tithing does, it makes you do better on that other 90% that you have left. Yes. You yes. have to be disciplined and keep your outgoing expenses down. And when you do, you'll start finding, when you start lowering your expenses, um, you know, and you have enough money to give to the church, you go ahead and give that gross 10%, not that net, you know, you go ahead and do that. Right. And you give it freely. Uh, once you master, and which is why giving is last in my book, though it's really first. But once you master, like I said earlier, how to game plan your money and how to use your gift, you don't you don't have a choice but to but to give back. And you're giving it in a way to where you can be a cheerful giver because now you didn't you didn't refinance um, this high interest card. You consolidated some debt, so now instead of your, you know, your credit card being 20%, now it's on, you know, now it's maybe 2%, uh, you know, so you're getting down your expenses. Oh my goodness. You know, a year or two later, you paid off your car. You don't have any more credit card bills. You're going to give freely. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah. You're yeah. Not, yeah. You're you not know, lined up. Yeah. you're not. You, and, and the word talks about, you know, being free. You know, yeah. I mean, I, I tell you, and, and I just be a little transparent here. You know, we are within 30 days away of paying off our primary home. Wow. And I don't say that because we wow. made, we made all this money. That is not the truth there. Wow. But what it is, is that we reduced our expenses in such a way. And, you know, we were able to put our money into, you know, investments. We were able to tithe we were able to put money in savings to where you know once everything came together for us we were able to generate enough income from an, some investments that we've done to be able to take the proceeds and pay our house wow. off altogether wow. but we wow. were not able to do that until we mastered and optimized how to get our expenses down so now, because because we, we don't have any other debt anyway, so so all that other debt, so cars, you know, credit card, all that loans, they're all done anyway. And, right. But we worked we worked hard to make sure that we didn't have those extra expenses, so that we could give freely. As right. we gave freely, that's when all these other opportunities came to us. We're like, wait, oh hey, we could do that right. because we right. kept our expenses down in such a right. way. So we were able to, we were free now to put our money in other places that worked for us. Does that make sense, guys? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 Definitely. You know, versus, Definitely. you know, continuing to pay, you know, a car note or whatever. We said, no, we're done with that. We're going to right. now put our dollars elsewhere where it can flip for us. And now, you know, and so theoretically, um, you know, once the month is over and we have no more house payment, we don't have any debt, you know, so being able to Think of how freely now we would be with no house payment. I mean, this is just right. for real stuff. Mm. 
Yeah. And, you know, I, I'm telling you, I've not sold a million books, so I don't want to make, I don't want anybody to be under the illusion, you know, that we just sitting over a million. Times. No, I'm, me and my husband, we're, we're military folk, I'm telling you. So if you military, y'all know. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. So, you know, you're not, you know, you're not bringing all this, this cash money in. It's about being smart with the little you have and trust God that he's going to make things happen for you. And I'm telling you, we, me, me and my husband, we're regular folk. We're regular. But God's done some miraculous things because we trusted him. Right. Wow. And that's a testimony right there. Yeah. Right there. Trusting God. That's the key. And then a couple of takeaways I got from that. Is, okay. Like I love your takeaways, Robin. I love them. <laughs> is that have a relationship with God first. Put him first. Trust him. This is a heart issue. God is dealing with your heart. So make sure you're a cheerful giver. Yes, yes. And do your research on tithes and offerings. Mm -hmm. It is important for you to understand and read the full scripture. Don't get, like um, Tina said, do the one scripture and the rest of it was at the bottom. Because we always like to do the happy stuff and forget the other stuff. <laughs> we it's always true. like to read what God going to do, but underneath <laughs> the stuff that we're supposed to do first. So mm-hmm. make sure you read the full scripture. Yes. Get your understanding that is king and make sure you're sowing into God's kingdom. It is yes. so, so, so important. So important. Yes. Yes. I always love our yes. conversations together. <laughs> I learn something every time I talk to you. Oh, amen. I appreciate it. I'm, I'm really honored that you do. I'm so glad. Yes, I do. So it's it's always a blessing to um, spend time with you. And I look forward to it uh, for the listeners. We do. We speak with Tina every other Monday. And I always look forward to speaking to you. So thank you again thank you. for joining us. And if you want to give all your social media um, platforms so people can tune in to you. Absolutely. Yes. So if you're on social media, the financial T is already there. Um, check us out on Instagram. We are at the financial T. Um, that is Instagram. Yes. So we're at the financial T. Um, Twitter, we are also at the financial T. Facebook at the financial T. Um, you can always go and um, search on YouTube, the financial T. Um, we are there. We've got some cool videos to be able to help you understand uh, tithing a little bit more. I did a series called Tea Sip and Sundays, and we did tithing for a while, for for a few Sundays. Um, you'll learn more about how to optimize your money. Um, I got some skits in there. Um, trust me, you will be entertained, but you'll learn too. Um, so check us out on all those platforms. You can always, always, always go to my website, which is the letter t dot org. You can order my book. You can order some t-shirts. You can go and learn about some things. We've got some free um, money lit right there for you about why it's important about life insurance, why it's important to have a will, why it's important to know how to write checks, things of that nature. So you can always go there as well and to find out how you can uh, become a client of ours. So if you think you need a financial coach, there is one link on there that you can go to our website and click on and you will um, be connected with one of our coaches and schedule a free consultation so that we can help you. Um, Shamika, Kevin, and I and Susan is coming on very soon. We are uh, waiting to be able to serve you and meeting your financial goals. So again, the financial T, we're here. And also, um, for the listeners, all her information will also be listed with this uh, podcast when you go out to um, Podbean Financeology 101, all her social media platform. So all the information you want to get in touch with her will be listed there. Thank Roy, you so much. You, oh, you're welcome. Elroy, can Thank you me. give our platforms, please? Yes, ma'am. Uh, our platform on Facebook is Gifted Jen LLC. On Instagram is gift.gen. On YouTube, click on the search button and type in Gifted Generations LLC. And of course, our website is giftedgenerations-llc.com. 
and Robin, as we always say, don't, don't forget, forget the dash. The dash. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Okay. <laughs> what a wonderful session. And once again, thanks, Tina. We truly appreciate you. And we're going to be signing off. Have a good night. Bye, Bye everybody. Thank you, Tina. Well, thank you for tuning in to our podcast, Financeology 101. I hope you enjoyed this session and the information provided will assist you on your financial journey. Until next time, be financially engaged.